The book does not contain the story. It holds it there, waiting to be set free in the telling. Restless to be heard by the world. Ready to renew us through every word. The book does not contain the story. Only the words, and each is an embrace of promise. Alive in the retelling, ready to shift the world towards the truth they contain. The book does not contain the story. The story is in each one of us, waiting to be told. Hello, I'm Roddy Hamilton, the Minister of New Kilpatrick Church, and thank you for the invitation to join you again today. I wonder how many of us will have a story to tell after the summer of places that we've been to, holidays that we've made, people we've met, experiences that we've shared. It's one of the things that seem to be uniquely human in us, the ability to tell stories and find in these stories meaning. We are people of the story. Now that's a faith statement. You can lay down creeds and doctrines and we would still be faithful, still find our way, still believe. But if you laid down the story, we'd be lost. Our faith is a story and our story is faith. And today, again, we tell it. Great storyteller, great word of life. May we listen, hear, reflect, retell the story of our faith. May we make room to find a fresh understanding, a renewed experience of who we are in the great story that is our faith. Dare we let go our presumed creeds our unquestioned doctrines, and speak once more the stories we hold, that they may free us and you from the limits we have created, and know a faith, and share a time, and open a space where thought is alive, questions are always ready, adventures are presumed, and our story is alive in every retelling. And we might experience love afresh and touch grace anew and find truth again and know forgiveness 
once more and seek renewal here among us all. Whoever we are, this holy community held together in the story of love, your story and your gift to us all. Hear us as we say the global prayer together. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. After the bulrushes, after the Midian wilderness, after the burning bush, after the great I am, after the hesitation and stuttering, after the Pharaoh's no, after the list of plagues, comes Passover, the unleavened bread, the angel of night, the wailing of the Egyptians, and the memory of the meal. You shall observe this rite as a perpetual ordinance for you and your children. When you come to the land that the Lord will give you, as he has promised, you shall keep this observance. And when your children ask you, what do you mean by this observance? You shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice to the Lord. For he passed over the houses of the Israelites in Egypt when he struck down the Egyptians, but spared our houses. And the people bowed down and worshipped. <laughs>
Because overseas holidays are not so much in vogue this year, the staycation has come into its own. Now, I'm fairly boring on the holiday front at the best of times and tend to do staycations anyway, regularly going to the same few places each year. This year, however, we broke the mould and spread our wings a little and ended up in a few new places. All of them good. One was Jupiter Artland, where the whole landscape is covered in insulation arts. Huge landscaped areas to small statues and figurines. With one or two, it was quite obvious what they were about, and in many ways these were possibly the, the least exciting. Most, however, were more ambiguous. You had to read the story behind them. The get the event or the idea that created the muse that shaped them. So that you had an idea of what you were looking at and experience it more fully. Then you shared an experience you would never have had unless you knew the story of the statue or the installation. Talking of stories and statues, there is still quite a debate about statues more generally. You'll often find statues simply with a name on them and that's really all you're given. It is presumed the person was influential or famous enough for you to know the story behind the person. There's a powerful arrogance in that. Those who belong to the culture or tradition know the story and if you don't know it, well, clearly you don't belong. It doesn't make for a very welcoming society. There are other statues, however, that don't presume and are focused more on telling the story. One example, and it is only just one, is, is Martin Luther King, a person you thought would hardly need explaining. A name or even initials would be just fine. But on this memorial in Washington, there are 16 quotes from his speeches. It's a statue that doesn't presume but its meaning is held within the story. A story that needs to be freshly told by everyone who comes to see it. It does not presume on tradition or that there are things that are forever known, but relies on the story being told again and again. A timeless story told afresh in each generation, every time the statue or the memorial is visited. And there is something extraordinarily effective about that. The storytelling is essential, not just for our past, but for our future too. Storytelling is essential for our morality. Telling this story again and again shapes a vision for who we aim to be, not who we have been, which is what these other statues are founded on. Such a means of keeping our morals alive is a faith tradition. It is what our faith is, storytelling. In the story, our morals and traditions and history and future is kept alive. Now, so much is wrong with a church that just presumes people know or understand its beliefs or its creeds. But way back in Exodus, we hear the first insight into this truth. It is Passover. And before the Hebrews have even left their houses and taken the first step on the journey to freedom, Moses reminds the people, when your children, future generation, ask about this, tell the story of what is happening tonight. Do you see what's happening? Moses is already looking towards the future, knowing that future will be shaped by the stories we tell of this moment. This isn't the importance of storytelling on the moral life. These stories identify who we are and who we have a vision of becoming. If we don't remind ourselves of our stories, then we quickly fall into whatever idolatry is current. Populism, idealism, individualism, consumerism. As a church, in this existential moment, we have a choice to be the statue that bears only a name that no one will remember, or a community that tells stories. A choice to presume we are known and have already added all we can add to a community's life, or remind ourselves of the gift we have for our community's future, 
the moral vision of who we can become, reminding ourselves of Samaritans and prodigals, of exodus and prophets, of incarnation and resurrection, and let the retelling of these stories remind us, renew us and reshape us. Let go a tradition that presumes and open the invitation of a new retelling. Loving God, the pause in our worry and the hope in our anxiety. In all the stories we tell of our world, we trust you hear them all. The stories we cannot tell, the ones we do not know about, the stories that anger us with the injustice, hurt us with the pain, confront ourselves with the mirror they hold up to us. Within these stories, we pray and pause and let your love and grace hold the world and love it back towards you. May we all find our morals again that move us towards each other, that shape a space for the diversity of us all, that levels the ground between rich and poor, powerful and powerless, an ethic that speaks of love, prioritises a life shared, a planet that is healthy and equal, communities that are open and generous, an ethic that moves us against prejudice, self-interest, power, and in your love and grace holds the world and loves it back towards you. We bring our families and friends, those who are unwell physically and mentally, those we worry about, who have lost jobs, security, sense of life, those troubled daily by anxiety, fearful of life and pandemics, for those in hospital, those grieving, those lost and those angry with life. May your love and grace hold this world and love it back towards you. And for all of us, trying to find a way forward, confused by where we are and who we are, unable to see what the future will be and finding days difficult, coping with changes and different needs and attitudes, worried about safety and institutions and community. May your love and grace hold this world and love it back towards you.
so be it. Amen. peace and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the common life of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for letting us join you today. We are ever available online with past services and podcasts and prayers and information and bulletins and a whole bundle of other things. We're still in summer mode, so things are quiet, but planning is now happening behind the scenes as to how we will be over the next few months and what activities we will be able to take part in. Thanks to Christine and Ian for reading, Chris for playing, and all of you for being here. Hope to meet you again next time. Have a good week and take care of each other.